All right, welcome back to, I guess, another video I haven't posted in a bit, but tonight we're actually gonna be taking engagement photos. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm taking two lenses with me, a Sigma Art 35 1.4 and then the 7200 2.8. I love starting with the 7200 and then putting on the 35 once my couples are kind of warmed up. So we're gonna be doing it kind of more in a green area, lots of trees, forests, and then we might be going downtown after. So I'm gonna show you all the end the scenes tonight. Uh, just a casual video showing you how I caught these photos and just everything about that. So let's go take off, take some awesome photos with our clients. I'll see you there. All right, so for this scene, we are out in a park and we have a backlit scene here with the beautiful sun coming in. Now I'm exposing for their skin because we have shadows in the background. We don't have a bright uh, skyline. We don't have bright clouds or anything. So you can really uh, afford to expose correctly uh, for your camera. So I'm focusing on her eyes. And for the beginning of the shoot, I'm saying, hey guys, talk about what you're excited for for the future. Or I'll ask a question, who proposed? Or obviously, most of the time, the guy proposed. But what I mean is like, what was the first thing that was going through in your mind when you first met? Who said I love you first? And this really gets them talking to each other, giggling, remembering why they love each other. Because most of the time they've been dating for two years, five years, eight years, so they kind of forget about the beginning stages. So I like to kind of play 21 questions. And then instead of them talking to me, they're talking to each other about my questions. And then I lightly engage if they are talking to me. Now, with these photos, I'm zooming in around 85 to 200. Um, and I like to get nice, close and get as much compression and these are kind of some of the photos that we're overlaying here and yeah better yeah i love that and then you can kind of both close your eyes, you guys can straight side to side, just relaxing in the moment. All right, for this one, I'm zooming in to 135, shooting for those trees that are just above them and framing them between the hanging leaves. I really like doing this in a lot of my photography. Uh, it allows to be a tad creative and then set motion blur in front, and then you still are very up close and personal in your client's uh, uh, motion. It's not like a big wide shot. I'm not shooting a 35 millimeter standing that far back. I'm, whenever I do landscape photos, I like to be pretty far back with the 7200. Uh, to really get that depth of field and that compression of the scene, but still like, boom, popping. And then if I shoot with 35, I like to get closer and then have more of the scene come into the camera. So that's kind of the difference there. <laughs> you can take a look at each other. See so both uh, like scotch people, beer people, wine, all. So the difference here is that when I was shooting with my 35 millimeter up close, it was kind of only capturing the shadows. It was very boring, plain photo. Nothing really popped. There wasn't a lot of big pop of warmth coming from the sun. However, when I backed up, put on my 7200, I was shooting through these trees. And if you look closely, there's like a more orange, yellow looking leaf that's like turning color to the fall. The rest is green. When I put that on the bottom of my frame, the left of the frame, as the sun hits it, it looks like a magical glow. And if I make that the frame, the bottom left of the photo, the top left of the photo, it adds a beautiful element to this scene. Whereas when I was shooting with my 35 millimeter up close, there's nothing pizzazzing the photo. There's nothing creative. It was just a boring, nice photo of them to look at the camera. Still beautiful, but when I come up here, it adds more of a style to the photography. And I really enjoyed a lot more. That's kind of what I'm looking out for. Uh, and it's good to do a balance of both because sometimes your clients want that boring photo that's uh, even lighting for the fridge, for mom and dad, for printing. Then uh, it's really important to add pizzazz to your photography to add more style, which I'm always looking to do a balance of both. Love it. <laughs> and now you guys can face each other. Now, Joe, with your left hand, you can hold either his neck or his chin and kind of snuggle into him, and then you can wrap both your hands around your hip. Uh, just your left, and you can lower it a little bit. Yeah, just like that. You gotta get a little closer, go forehead to forehead. Then you two can both close your eyes for a second. I want you to imagine 20 years from now with your beautiful family, your beautiful home, your amazing life together. Then you can open up your eyes and go in for a kiss.
So for this scene, I got them uh, sitting down, but you can tell from the five little prompts I tell them to do, I'm allowed to get a lots of versatile looks within just even uh, like 30 seconds. So I say, look at each other, both look to your left, both look to your right. All right, now just Aaron, you can look into her eyes. All right, now you lean into her forehead as she's still looking at the sky. Now look at each other, now tickle each other. You can tell that uh, if you do that, you can get a lot of different emotions going on and a lot of different looks in a short span, even though it's one sitting down scene. All right, so now we are gonna be adding some movement into our photography. It's a lot of fun to get your clients dancing around. So I taught them this little prompt where they do two steps, going for a twirl, and they pace themselves, and they do three steps, and then they go in for a hug and snuggle, and I tell them to go creative, but it's just a premise, and this always gets them giggling, having fun. It shows movement, it captures energy, and it's not just them standing in a field, it's them having fun together, and it shows off their personality as a couple. Now we're having the last bit of sun before it sets and it gets this amazing sun flare. Now when you're editing the photos, adding contrast can add a really good flare that in the highlights and get a lot of the blacks darker. Uh, so it's really glow and always uh, a nice tip is focus on their eyes with the sun literally behind there and then hold the focus and then move and let the sun peek in uh, right behind them. Uh, if you go on continuous focus mode, sometimes that can help. Uh, or at a single, depending, go between the single and continue to see what you like better. Uh, there's different techniques to nail your focus, but it is going to be challenging. And for if you, you want to pick her up for this, uh, this part, the scene here, uh, but that's a work in progress as you become a better photographer, you'll be able to do it. Uh, but yeah, I had awesome stuff for the time. I got some awesome uh, wide photos, photos yeah. uh, more close up, vertical, horizontal. I find uh, I love shooting the same guys under for photos like these. Now we're shooting more Santa photos, but now I was shooting for some of the green and parts of the tree to add some elements to the foreground. And shooting at 200, it really adds some bit of flare. And then if you want to 70, then it's more of a wide shot. Really? <laughs> No, I don't do a lot of these at the standard, let's smile at the camera, and I actually regret not doing a lot of this stuff in my career because I thought it was too uh, cliche, but it actually is kind of important uh, to do it at least twice throughout the shoot, especially if there's two outfits, because uh, the worst is on a wedding day, if you don't have one nice, let's look at the camera and smile, it's nice to have that, especially with the dog. This can be their family photo, and they go bonkers for it, and even though it might not look hip and cool on your Instagram feed, it's awesome to include. Lo and behold, I am now using trees as foreground. So having that V really frames them nicely, and then there's another V hanging to the left. Uh, just, it's really fun to be creative and shoot for these. Uh, and you can really learn new composition, especially with the variable zoom, like a 7200 or 24 to 70. Now, I love my 7200, an 85 would be great, uh, or a 135. Uh, I like to use more for receptions, but uh, yeah, as you can see tonight, I used 7200 quite a bit. Be sure to join the Own Your Look Facebook group as well because I post a lot more behind the scenes and more free presets and awesome contents there and I want you guys to be able to get that access. So join below, it's the first link. And if you guys have any questions, drop them below. I had a lot of fun on this shoot. It was fun to bring just two lenses. I've been doing that a lot for my engagement shoots and it's really fun to go between the two. And if you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Drop them below. Uh, any questions about gear, settings, how I edited them and kind of what I said during the shoots or anything else you desire to see on this channel. I'm excited to be posting more, sharing more. I've had a lot of time to reflect on what I want to be sharing on this channel. I'm excited to post more. So I'll see you guys in the next video. 
Feel free to subscribe and like if you're new around here because we like to have good time, good vibes, and coffee especially, which my butts go get. So, without further ado, take it easy guys, and I'll see you in the next one.